Hi, this is Munson with Munson Music, and we're going to talk about how you can play a song called Temple of Thought by Poets of the Fall. And it's going to start with a really cool guitar arpeggio around some chords we'll talk about later. But, but it's going to start on 2nd fret on the A string, and then 2nd fret on the D string, and then open G string, and then we go back to the 2nd fret on, on the D string. And what this is really is kind of an arpeggio of the E minor chord, where, where if you have the first finger on the A string, second finger on the D string, and you strummed them all together, that would sound an E minor chord. And so what, what's happening here is there's something called an arpeggio where you break that chord up. And what the arpeggio is is where you're just kind of playing the single notes, where, where that lick you're starting on the second fret on the A, and then second fret on the D, and then open G. So you're, so you're kind of playing an E minor chord, but you're breaking it up. So you're going A, D, G, D, A, D, G, D, A, D, G, A, D, G, D, A, D, G, D, A, D, G. And then we go to another arpeggio, which is, which is kind of around a different chord, but we're going to do second fret on the A, and then fourth fret on the D string, and then second fret on the G string. And kind of do that as an arpeggio where we're going A, D, G, D, A, D, G, D, A, D, G, A, D, G, D, A, D, G, D, A, D, G. And, and what that's kind of implying is a B minor chord. And there are a couple ways that you can kind of play a B minor chord. One way would be to do it as a bar chord. And the way you do a bar B minor, first finger is going to go across the entire second fret. The second finger is going to go to the B string on the third fret. Third finger is going to go D string on the fourth fret. And the pinky is going to go to the G string on the fourth fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a B minor chord and it sounds really, really sad. So that's kind of what that arpeggio is, is, is doing at the very, very beginning, is kind of implying that B minor chord. And there are a couple other easier ways that you could do B minor if you're just starting out and that seems like a difficult thing to do. Um, one would be to take the first finger and go high E second fret, second finger on the B string on the third fret, and third finger on the G string on the fourth fret. And if you strum just the top four, the top three strings with that, that's still a B minor chord. And another way to do it would be do first finger on the high E second, second finger on the B string third, but then take the third finger on the D string on the fourth fret and the pinky on the G string on, on the fourth fret. And if you strum the top four strings with that, that still sounds a B minor chord. It still sounds kind of sad. So in our intro, that, that's what those arpeggios are working off of, is you kind of got an E minor, E minor, B minor. The chords actually, our verse kind of starts that same way. We got E minor, E minor, B minor, B minor, E minor, E minor, and then B minor, B minor, and then after that, this is kind of weird because consciously, I, I I would actually play an A minor on the next chord, although. Later on in the tune, it gets turned into an A major. But the way you play an A minor, first finger is going to go to the B string on the first fret. Second finger is going to go to the D string on the second fret. Third finger is going to go to the G string on the second fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds an A minor chord, and it sounds really, really sad. And then from the A minor, then we're going to go back to E minor, and then do a B minor. But then we're going to go to a D major. And the way you play D major, first finger is going to go G on the second fret. Second finger on the high E on the second fret, and the third finger on the B string on the third fret. And if you strum just the top four strings, just D, G, B, and E, that sounds a D major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then from D major, we're going to be going to a C major chord. And the way you play C major, first finger is going to go B on the first fret, the second finger is going to go D on the second fret, and the third finger is going to go to the A string on the third fret. And if you strum all the strings with that, that sounds a C major chord and it sounds really, really happy. And then we kind of go back and almost repeat that. We, we do the E minor, B minor, and then we go to C major, and then we go to E minor, but then we go to a G major chord. And the way you play G major, first finger is going to kind of stay on the A on the second fret, the second finger is going to go low E on the third fret, and the third finger is going to go to the high E on the third fret. And if you strum all those together, that sounds a G major chord. It sounds really, really happy. And then from the G major, we're going to go back to D major, and then a C major, and then we're going to do an E minor, and then a D major, and then we kind of end our pre-chorus on the C major, and another big C major.
But a lot of times with a song like this, to make it more interesting, especially if you're doing rhythm guitar stuff, I like adding what I call a strum pattern to it. And one of my favorite 4-4 four, four strum patterns is a down, down, up, up, down, up. So if you took the E minor and just tried that a lot, you'd have down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up, down, down, up, up, down, up. Which could work through this song, and, and we'll talk about a more interesting strum pattern in a minute. But just to try our verse th through that strum pattern, you have the E minor with the down, down, up, up, down, E minor, down, down, up, up, down, up, E minor, down. Or B minor, but but we're gonna have to start halving the strum pattern. And one way that, that you could do that is do it just a down down up on each of those chords. So you could take the E minor and just do a down down up, and then go to the B minor for a down down up, and then we actually kind of do that same thing for the D and the C, and the C down up E minor down down up, E minor down down up, and then we end up on a C with the whole strum pattern. Where we got the C down down up. with a down, down, G, down, down, a D, down, down, C, down, down, D minor, down, down, D, down, down, C, down, down, up, up, down, and then that last C, we, we just do, a, do kind of a down, down, up, down, to kind of half that last C right before our chorus. Through our chorus, it's, it's almost like a repeat of part of the pre-chorus, where you're going to E minor, down, a B minor, down, down, a D, down, down, C, down. Part, we're going to be doing that whole strum pattern all the way through where we got the D down, down, up, up, down, C down, down, up, up, down, D down, down, up, up, down, C down, down, up, up, down, B minor, down, down, up, up, down, C down, down, up, up, down, D down, down, up, up, down, C down, down, up, up, down, B minor, down, down, up, up, down, up. And then we kind of be going back to our intro and most of the rest of our song we'd be repeating those. Now something else you may want to try and add is on the halving parts, sometimes it can sound really interesting instead of doing down, down, up on each chord, is to take the down, down, up, up, down, up and half it between those chords. So for instance, if we went back to, to kind of our pre-chorus E minor, B minor, you have E minor with the down, down, up, and then the B minor with the up, down, up. So E minor, down, down, up, B minor, up, down, kind of carry that through like on all those chords that were kind of half in the strum pattern on. So we tried that from that part. We'd have the E minor down, down, up, B minor, up, down, up, D, down, down, up, C, up, down, E minor, down, down, up, B minor, up, down, C, down, down. Now one other weird thing is on the second verse when it comes to the A chord, instead of playing the A minor, it definitely sounds like there's an A major chord going on. And the way you play A major, first finger goes to the D string on the second fret, second finger on the G string on the second fret, third finger goes to the B string on the second fret, and if you strum all those together, that sounds an A major chord and it sounds really, really happy. So we tried that through our, our verse part. Well, we have the E minor down, down, up, up, down, E minor down. I think it's kind of cool because the arpeggio that gets used on, on that intro part 
and it's kind of ambiguous because they don't actually play the third, so you could actually do the A minor, the first verse, and then kind of switch it to the A major in the second verse. Actually, would, would like to use a 16th note strum pattern and what I mean by that is an eighth note is if you're tapping your foot and you divide it into two parts one two one two one two that's what we're doing right now with the eighth or the down down up up down up what a 16th note is is if you divided that foot tap into four parts like one two three four 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 and one, one of my favorite strum patterns for this particular song would be a down up up down up up down up down up and what I mean by that is like if you took the E minor we started on in the first beat you'd be doing a down on one and an up on four so you'd be going one two three four down up one two three four down up down up down so kind of a long down up one well, one two three four one two three four one two three four one two three four and on the second beat you'd be doing an up down like an up on two and a down on three so you'd be going one two three four Up on two and up on four. So you're going one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, up, 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 one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And on the last beat, you're going down, up, down, up, right along with the one, two, three, four. So down, up, down, up, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. So if you put all that together, then you have long down, up. doing the down up up on the first chord and then the down up up down up down on the next chord so this can be a lot of a little weird but just to try that you'd have E minor with down up up E minor down up up down up down up E minor down up up E minor down up up down up down so we tried that through our pre-chords then we have our E minor with a down up up E minor down Then we have our E minor, up, up, B minor, up, up, down, up, down, D, down, up, up, C, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, up, 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 down, up, down, up, down, up, up, down, 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 up, change to the A major, we'd have E minor now. E minor, D, and then a big 
But that's the basics of how you can strum through Temple of Thought by Poets of the Fall. So good luck!